thanks so much for talking to the GOG cast. And I'm really, really excited about Toronto Defiant. Congratulations on the announcement of the team name and everything. Yeah, thank you very much. We're um, we're really excited too. We share that enthusiasm. It's uh, it's been quite a journey already, but uh, certainly our fans have given us every reason to be optimistic about what we're doing here. And uh, the energy around all of this the last few weeks has just been uh, really, really uplifting. So uh, yeah, we're excited too. What's it been like since uh, obviously your announcement of your uh, position came before the actual name of the team and stuff? So how has the ramp up of that uh, whole experience been for you personally? <laughs> Thanks for asking. It's uh, it's been a bit of a flurry, that's for sure. I, you know, I've only been kind of in the chair for officially for uh, four weeks now. I guess this is my fourth week. Um, but you know, in one way or another, I've been working on this project since the spring. And, uh, you know, for the last few weeks, certainly at the Olympic Committee was, uh, you know, digging into this more and more. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's been quite a period of transition, uh, pretty high energy and, and uh, lots to do. I mean, at the end of the day, while the Overwatch League is certainly well established and underway, Overactive Media, we're just uh, we're just really getting started. Our, uh, I met with half my staff today. I had two people in the meeting. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, we're uh, we're just getting our feet under us, but it feels great, I must say. It's it, it starts, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Like you got to slow build until it makes this uh, amazing team that I'm really excited to get behind. Um, personally, I'm based out of Montreal right now, but moving to Toronto, so I feel like I'm coming at the exact right moment. <laughs> oh, well, great! We'll be pleased to welcome you here, and uh, and frankly, pleased to um, to speak to our Quebec-based and eastern part of the country fans as well. We've uh, I don't know whether you noticed, but, you know, we've tried to be um, quite intentional around making sure that we're thinking about our our French Canadian fans as well. And for those uh, who, who who speak French first, uh, we released our launch video uh, with French voiceover as well. And and our initial. Uh, en français. And um, while it's not um, Montreal and in, in the Quebec part of the or Quebec province in the eastern part of the country are not technically in our and our designated marketing area we certainly understand that there are a lot of overwatch league fans there and we uh we would certainly like to think over time there could be a great number of toronto defiant fans over there so we're um we're trying to be uh, as i say intentional about speaking to them in that way i think there will be i mean it's kind of natural for us between like trop uh the raptors esports team as well as the raptors themselves and mm -hmm. you know having the blue jays and not having you know the expos here like we're we're, we're a little bit used to that and uh you know you got to start somewhere like i said so uh it's nice to have uh, an east coast team being toronto and then soon enough a west coast team team with Vancouver so super stoked about that um, about yourself though I, I this is amazing because we've talked about it so often in the in the GOG cast about the potential of esports being part of the Olympics and now you coming from the Olympics and the Canadian Olympic Committee what made you want to make that jump what did you see in esports that made you want to transition over from traditional sports to non-traditional sports yeah, thank you. That's that's a great question, and uh, we just spent two hours talking about it, so it's all top of mind. But um, you know, I guess first and foremost, I saw a great group of owners. Uh, we've got um, some really special people involved here in the ownership of the franchise, um, with really uh, nicely suited backgrounds to one another and very eclectic experience. So whether it's uh, Sheldon Pollock as our chairman and one of our founding partners, um, and his tech and and um, and you know his. Um, his position as really an innovator in the tech space over a long time now, uh, or uh, Adam Adamo, who uh, who worked and has worked in his career for many years in early stage venture capital, or the Kimmel family led by Mike Kimmel and their entrepreneurial flair and everything that they do. Um, we just really liked the, the mix of, uh, and I really liked the mix of people that were involved at the very uh, top levels of the organization. So I was really very proud to be invited into that conversation to work with those um, with those those folks, um, but you know the rest of it kind of goes back to uh, the exposure that I had, frankly, to the Activision Blizzard team, and to the um, the group of people that have been building out the Overwatch League, um, and that goes back a couple of years. I was introduced to uh, the the Activision Blizzard team a couple of years ago. It would have been 2016, right after I got back from the Rio Olympics. And a mutual friend out of New York introduced us, and I went out to California and met with uh, many of the people whose names you would know, Jeff Kaplan and Mike Morheim and 
Pete Delestica and, and Nate Nanzer, um, and and really learned a lot. And really, uh, you know, that period of time over a few months really opened my eyes to the potential of all of this and the incredible growth that esports has been witness to globally, and and all the potential in the Overwatch League. Uh, and the, and, the, and the growth of the game in the short period of time that had been launched. So when I started looking at that uh, alongside Sheldon and, and the others, it just didn't seem like something I could pass on it. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity to, uh, from a business perspective, but, but also, you know, how often do you get a chance to start a brand new franchise in a brand new league that has a global perspective? It's, it's just, when I think about the things I'd like to do for the next 10 years, <laughs> This made uh, perfect sense to kind of my evolution and interest. So. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're definitely your uh, your CV definitely shows that you have this background between uh, the Raptors and the NHL and the NFL and the, being with the Miami Dolphins. You really understand too about building the team and the fans in the city in the area, but at the same time, not necessarily the players coming from that locale, coming from anywhere in the world. Because uh, I also read that you guys just announced two new players um, during the conference in Toronto uh, not too long ago, um, EGLX. So you must have a really good concept of how to build a team, but still keep that local feel to it, so that the folks around the town are really invested in the team even though the players might not necessarily be from that city. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I, uh, first of all, it's nice of you to say. I, um, you know, my experience across those leagues, I think, helps this conversation and helps what we're trying to do here. You know, we really, um, as an organization, what we're really aspiring to do here is to build out a world-leading uh, professional esports company in the same that, you know, one day we hope, will be thought of and in the same conversation as Madison Square Gardens and Maple Leaf Sports. So, you know, we really believe in the model that um, is city-based franchises that play in a professional league. And, you know, the model that we were presented with by the Activision Blizzard team that is the Overwatch League is just the very same as a model uh, that looks like the NBA or the NFL. They built uh, this game purpose-built this game to build a league that looks just like the NBA and the NFL around it. And so, as you point to, you know, my experience um, in those leagues and, and inside of uh, inside of all of that makes sense. But what we want to do at Overactive Media is um, is is basically the same as, as, again, Madison Square Garden or Maple Leaf Sports. Our Toronto Defiant franchise inside the Overwatch League is just our first foray into this. But certainly as um, as Activision Blizzard builds out future leagues and we expect that they will do so, uh, we'll be hungry investors in, in those leagues as well. We certainly expect to acquire and build brands, whether they be um, esports team brands or whether they be personalities and players inside of uh, games like Fortnite and others. We certainly expect to be producers, great producers of content and, uh, and, and storytellers and all of that so that we can... Um, we can grow our brands and grow our players uh, status inside of the industry and figure out ways to help them monetize their careers. And then longer term, uh, certainly we, we do expect to, to uh, look at building ourselves a home and having a facility that we can call home right here in Toronto that can be both a home for our esports franchises, but also a place where we can uh, gather the community for celebrations and other tournaments and exhibitions and certainly uh, play host to uh, other aspects of entertainment on a global scale. So this is a uh, this is a big strategy that stretches well beyond what the Toronto Defiant represent today, but it certainly is our 100% focus at this moment. Very cool. Do you foresee you guys building something in Toronto to be able to support the uh, the league? Like, or do you think you're going to end up using one of the stadiums or arenas in the Toronto area? <laughs> Yeah, in the short term, uh, we will need a temporary solution in much the same way that, you know, early days of the Raptors were played at uh, then the Sky Dome, now the Rogers Center. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll play um, we'll play in a temporary home, a temporary facility for the first couple of years. And we've got some thoughts already as to what that can be and, and where that can be. Uh, so we're exploring that now. But uh, longer term, again, I think one of the great strengths and one of the great ways that John Bitto, the Nat ownership group of the Slate family here in Toronto, established the Raptors on the city scene 
was by announcing early that they were going to build a dedicated home for, for their team. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, the story goes and it, it came to be the Air Canada Centre and it came to be the home for both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Raptors. Um, so I don't see this as any different. Uh, these are conversations we've already started at the ownership table. And uh, again, it's not our first or biggest priority, but it's certainly something that's on our front burner. Mm -hmm. So what can Torontonians expect? Do you, will there be matches that people can buy tickets to and go watch? Or is a lot of it going to happen like for the first season, maybe online? Yeah, so the first season of the league, of course, is behind us. But the first season of the Toronto Defiant is the second season of the league. And that'll start in February. And all of those matches will be played in California at the Activision Blizzard Studios in Burbank, California. So our team will play basically, uh, along with all the other teams around the world, they'll play out of California for this next year starting in February. Uh, we will have some natural breaks in the season that will allow us the chance to bring the team back and get them engaged with some of our fan base and um, have uh, sponsor engagement and attachment to all of it in the same way that, again, traditional teams would approach that. And then in the third year, uh, again, we'll be expected to host, um, or we're certainly expecting the league to let us know that we'll be, uh, we'll be hosting home matches here in Toronto in, in a facility that we've identified. In terms of what the, uh, the fans can expect from us, we're really still working that out. I mean, you know, what I what I think I used to know about selling tickets in traditional sports, um, it's been a while since I've had to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that industry and, frankly, some of those strategies have changed along with kind of the socioeconomic uh, or rather the, the economic currency of people's time, uh, I think is a, an interesting question. So whether we sell season seats for our team or whether we uh, we do that a little bit differently, I'm not quite sure yet. But. Certainly that's something we're going to turn our attention to uh, not so long from now and hope to have um, hope to have, start to have conversations with our fans about what makes sense to them and how we should want to go about that mm -hmm. very soon. Very cool. Uh, on the eSports front, um, it's obviously been a little bit of a harder sell here in Canada, mostly because population, we're so far apart, you know, uh, technology and infrastructure is not always there. What do you think it means to Canada to bring Overwatch north of the border? Well, um, I, I think it's a, a huge opportunity. You know, Canada is so oftentimes, um, and, and, you know, Toronto the same for a lot of years, that we think that we think that the circumstances around Canada and Toronto have really changed. We think that, you know, this, when I say we, I'm, I'm thinking of our ownership group and our, our leadership here and our marketing team that we've been talking about as we were developing the brand Toronto Defiant. We spent a lot of time first, as you would expect, talking about the position of the brand and why, why you know, what defines Toronto and what should define, you know, kind of our posture in, in this space. And, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about kind of the emergence of Toronto and Canada on the global stage. I've been fortunate to work with, um, uh, you know, with a number of teams and brands over years and, and more recently in, in an international context, travel the world as part of my role at the Olympic Committee. And, Everybody that you know you speak to around the world really thinks of Toronto and Canada as world class, and the city of Toronto is, is truly a global city. And as someone said on our team uh, several weeks ago, Toronto has kind of emerged from side stage to main stage. I mm -hmm. think of that, you know, I think of that as being true for Canada as well. We, we as a, com a country, our people and our governments and all of who represent us, I think, provide. Um, uh, you know, in some ways kind of defy what the rest of the world is dealing with. We defy those things. And, and that's, that's somewhat where we landed on, you know, how we landed on the Toronto Defiant brand. And, and, and so we really think this is a big thing. And, and, and we really believe that uh, we've, um, we've captured in, in our visual identity and in our branding, we've captured that expression of Toronto and Canada kind of as the, uh, the quiet underdog, but the achiever. And, uh, you know, we do it in our own way. You know, we like to be humble in our own way, but uh, we like to win. And uh, uh, that's true for Canadians. It's true for Torontonians, I think, as well. Um, and certainly a posture that, you know, our Olympic program brings to all of this from my perspective. So, you know, on the other side, uh, there are so many fans here of esports generally and, and of Over Overwatch uh, more specifically. The league tells us that just in the greater Toronto area, we have as many as 500,000 declared enthusiasts and or registered players of Overwatch in the greater Toronto area alone. And um, and so, you know, this has been percolating just below the surface, I think, for a long time. And 
And, um, you know, in the work that we all do together with our fans over the next weeks, months and years, I think it's going to be great to watch all of that rise together. Yeah, I really do feel that the branding, I come from a graphic design background, so when I saw the branding, I saw the name, I really felt that you guys did hit the nail on the head, the concept, you know, like the Raptors, We the North, even like the North str uh, Strong and Free, that kind of concept, mm. and it really, it almost borderline doesn't feel like a, a sports team logo, it has this new modern fresh take on it, and then with that mm. translated on with the colors, and then onto the Overwatch skins for the players to be using in match, they're gorgeous. Did you guys have yeah. much uh, input on that? Oh, uh, yeah. We worked with the league from the first minute, and um, uh, we don't we don't define the skins, but we we a lot um, a lot to do with where we landed with the visual identity. Uh, the color palette was our choice. Um, the logo was developed in partnership with the league, but um, we engaged a, a great group here in Toronto, of Diamond Marketing. And they had a very, very talented um, creative designer on their team, Kyle Nielsen, who uh, really drove that conversation for us. But I I'm glad. Uh, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you express it in the very way that you did. It's um, again, we wanted to speak to the city in a way that was unique. And we wanted to speak to the city in a way that made sense, again, from a brand positions uh, perspective. And we also, again, didn't want to fall into that kind of traditional sport position. We uh, um, you know, the elements of some of the branding that you've seen, um, we wanted, we wanted, for lack of a better term, to have early street credibility with the hardcore gaming community and with those who are just fans of the game. And, and, um, and we wanted it to have a, a, a feel like it was emanating from the people, if that makes sense. And that, you know, you'd be proud to have that, that mark on your hat. I was joking with the team. I mean, we do this right, and people are going to want to tattoo it on their bodies. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and I, I just think that I think that's uh, a high expression of brand acceptance uh, in, in, in a funny way. And I, I think we've got the kind of logo where uh, over some period of time we might we might see that kind of consideration. So we'll see. Oh, I, I think it might happen in the first year someone ends up tattooing that on themselves, you know? <laughs> we yeah, put that idea in their head now, so. <laughs> I, I bring that up as a, as a reference point all the time because uh, for background, years ago we did a, um, when I was at Maple Leaf Sports, we did a, a, a series of tickets uh, that were centered on how fans express uh, their passion for the Leaf brand. Mm -hmm. This would have been in 2000, 2001. And uh, I always remember that one of the one of the entries that we had that actually landed on one of our tickets was a gentleman who had actually tattooed the Toronto Maple Leafs logo on the underside of his lower lip. Wow, that's hardcore. And that's it. And, and I always thought that is the highest expression of fan support, where yeah. somebody actually puts the mark on their body forever. That's, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And my next follow-up question was going to be like, when can we buy merch? Because it's really nice, the logo. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We're working on it. So um, we have a short window of time here. The league actually controls that strategy and that and that um, overall posture on a global basis. But um, we're working on something that we can do here in the local market. We haven't yet managed to figure it all out, but I've actually got a a meeting on that tomorrow and um and so i won't make any promises about timing or how or when but it is uh, just something that we're we're trying to get to and we certainly want to have merchandise available if if at all possible this year so you'll have to leave that one with me but it is something that we're actively working on right now okay awesome because as soon as it's out i want to show my toronto defiant pride <laughs> excellent excellent we're counting on it so what's next for the team um obviously you've announced two players you got the logo out all that stuff what's the next step yeah so from a player perspective we've got a few things going on jay and bishop have been um, over in south korea running our training camp effectively for the last few weeks and at some point not so long from now probably toward the end of the month first of december uh they'll bring our our team uh, back to uh, back to North America and actually we'll get them set up and installed in Los Angeles mm -hmm. so they'll start to get ready for the season ahead and start to get comfortable in their surroundings in California so uh, from a team operations perspective that's uh, that's probably the uh, the most um, logical next step to point to um, you know on the business side we've got lots of things going on we're active every day and talking to investors we're speaking to um, uh, sponsors every day and, and starting to take uh, you know, pretty serious meetings in various categories related to sponsorship engagement. 
Um, that's a big part of uh, where I'm spending my time right now with the help of others. And then we're, uh, you know, we're going to build out our team a little bit. We've got some, we've got just a few with us right now, some of them on contract, and we'll be uh, slowly adding uh, to our overactive media team and our, um, you know, that'll help us grow the business and grow the strategy I referenced earlier. So uh, really those are the, those are the business priorities right now from a, from a team perspective, we, uh, you know, we're pleased where we've landed with our roster. I think Jay and Bishop have done a very good job. We think they've identified a talented group that'll play and work well together. And um, you know, so much a part of that of any sport team is 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 chemistry and and how you bring everybody together in a coordinated fashion. And particularly in this game, that's true. So we're really excited. We think, um, you know, we're, we'll we'll knock on wood and say that we we've got a strategy here that we think can allow us to be competitive early days. It's certainly um, certainly our hope and strategy to be competitive in the league as, as soon as we can be. And uh, again, uh, the folks that know our team better than I uh, say that um, they feel like we might be the case. Oh, that's excellent. I'm really stoked. Do you know when the first match is going to be? Uh, I do, but I'm not actually sure I'm supposed to say because I can't remember whether the league's announced it or not, but <laughs> it'll... Uh, uh, let's just say we'll be starting in February. Sounds and, good. Uh, and yeah, we've got uh, we've got lots to do before that. <laughs> well, we'll be anxiously waiting for that first game. Um, and uh, thank you, Chris, so much for this uh, for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate it. How can people follow Toronto Defiant so that they can keep up uh, up on the times with all the updates and knowing when the first match is? Yeah, thank you. Um, we uh, I think we've managed to grow to uh, something in the order of twenty six thousand Twitter followers. And, uh, and in just a short few weeks here. So we're really excited about uh, that, that fan engagement. I would probably point you there first. Uh, we're certainly developing out our channels and strategies around Facebook and Reddit and uh, Instagram. Uh, but right now, I think most of our fans are engaged on Twitter and uh, where, we have, uh, where we have news and information, we tend to think of that platform first. Um, so I would say keep a close eye on that. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted on how it's coming along. Great. Well, thank you so much. Best of luck with it all. I know you're probably under the gun for all the different things that you need to have done before February, but we're uh, we're going to be very supportive watching from here and watching online as the team plays. Well, thank you. Really appreciate the support, and uh, we're available to you anytime, so please just ask. Great. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this highlight from the Girls on Games podcast, you can go subscribe to our show where most podcasts can be found or find all of our content at girlsongames.ca.